looking for things to do in Belfast. I've lived in Belfast all my life and I'm going to share with you the ultimate guide of things to do in Belfast. All my favourite things, food, drink, history, politics and everything in between. Right now I'm standing just outside the Europa Hotel. Now there are two airports in Belfast. You've got the city airport and the international airport which you can fly into but also you might arrive into Belfast via bus or train and if you do the station is just located right behind the Europa Hotel. So this is where you get off. One of the most famous buildings in Belfast so no better place to start. Let's pop over and have a wee look inside. Now the Europa Hotel is a four star hotel and actually known as one of the most bombed hotels in Europe and maybe actually the world. It suffered over 36 bomb attacks during the Troubles and was such a symbol for Belfast and actually still is today. So let's pop in and have a really good look inside. The Europa Hotel was actually opened in 1971 on the site of the former Great Northern Railway Station. It actually has 272 bedrooms, a lobby bar, a piano lounge, and this is my favourite fun fact, Bill and Hillary Clinton stayed here and had a suite renamed the Clinton Suite, although I've never had the chance to stay in it, maybe someday. It's actually just a really great place as well. If you want to come in for a cup of tea and you can sit and look out the windows and see Belfast go by. So when you come out of the Europa, you've got two choices. You can go right up to the Golden Mile or left down into the city centre. But we're going to head straight ahead over to the Crown Liquor Saloon, which is one of the oldest and most historic bars in Belfast. Crown Liquor Saloon, aka the Crown Bar, is probably one of the best known pubs in Northern Ireland. It opened as a railway tavern and was sold in 1885, renamed and refurbished in 1885 and only twice since then. Italian craftsmen were brought to Ireland to work on the many churches being built at the time and the pub owner persuaded these guys to work in the pub after hours, maybe even paid them a beer. And it was this high standard of work that gave the Crown Bar the reputation for being one of the finest Victorian gin palaces of its time. In 1987, the National Trust purchased the pub and has completed two restorations on the bar. It has a grade A listed status and is a must see for any visitors. When you go inside, you'll be just amazed by the interior. There are 10 10 booths or snugs which are built to give privacy during the Victorian times. These still feature original gunmetal plates for striking matches and a bell system for calling staff. The etched and stained glass windows feature painted shells, fairies, pineapples, clowns and give extra privacy and it's just a really picturesque historical bar. Robinson's bar next door is also very famous. It is actually a large bar filled with Titanic memorabilia. It was opened in 1895 and has Fibber McGee's which often has traditional music so if you like Irish music it's definitely another one that should be added to your list. So if you just turn left after leaving the Crown Bar, there are loads of things to do in Belfast on the Golden Mile. Now the Golden Mile actually starts on Great Victoria Street, extends up to Dublin Road, which we are on now, up to Bradbury Place and then up to Queen's. There are loads of bars and restaurants along the way. You've got the likes of Dean's, which is great for steak. You've got Fratelli's, which is Italian. Red Panda, which is Chinese. And then further on up, if you just look up ahead, there is Lavery's and Lavery's is a really well-known bar in Belfast and has actually opened the second premises which specialises in craft and local beers so it's definitely one to add to your list. But we're going to head on up to Queen's and Botanic and have a good look and see what's happening up there. So just coming up to Queen's University, which is part of the Queen's Quarter of Belfast, one of the six cultural areas. Queen's actually opened in 1810 and was only granted university status in 1908. And I actually didn't know this, but it's one of the largest employers in Northern Ireland and has a global reputation for research, attracting loads of international students. And it's great up here because you do see a massive mixture of cultures. Famous alumni actually include former Irish president Mary McAleese poet Seamus Heaney and of course very famous Northern Ireland actor Liam Neeson. Many people don't know but you can actually go in and around Queen's and have a walk around the grounds and actually see it in all its glory. Across the road you'll find Queen's Student Union and it's great because you can pop in there for a coffee or a lunch. Right next door to Queen's is Botanic Gardens which is a beautiful park right in the centre of Belfast. It actually spans across 28 acres and was opened in 1828 but best of all it's totally free and it's opened all year round, so let's go have a look. 
Botanic Gardens was actually a private park up until 1895 when the Belfast City Council purchased it. But inside here, it's just an oasis of peace and calm. There's a bowling green, a massive green area for children to have a run around, a rose garden, a bandstand, and there are actually loads of events and concerts held here. So do check out their list of events, especially throughout the summer. Behind me, you'll see the Palm House Conservatory, and it was built in 1840. Inside, it has got two sections, the cool plants, and the tropical plants and plants in there that are over 400 years old. It was actually also the earliest cast iron conservatory or glass house in the world. So if you're into plants or botany or gardening, this is definitely the stop for you. So just standing outside the Ulster Museum, located in the beautiful Botanic Gardens, it's actually the largest museum in Northern Ireland. So let's go in and have a look at all the history and the wonderful artifacts it has to offer. There's loads on display, everything from fine art to archaeology to treasures from the Spanish Armada. There's botany, zoology and geology, everything from Irish birds, mammals, marine to rocks, minerals and fossils. There are dinosaurs, Egyptian mummies and a children's discovery zone. And actually it is really good fun. I went with my children and we spent a good few hours there. The discovery zone is really interactive and there's loads of activities for the children to get involved in. There's also a coffee shop and a gift shop, so we always like to stop off for a wee cup of tea. It's actually 90 years young in 2019, but most of all, and what's really important, is it's actually totally free in, which is brilliant. So you can go in there and spend a good few hours and you don't have to pay anything. There's Peter the Polar Bear, who is actually a gift from Dublin Zoo. He passed away in 1972 and the children really enjoy getting up close and having a look at him. Then there's the Egyptian mummy, which also arrived in Belfast all the way from Egypt in 1834. And if you're a fan of the Game of Thrones, a more recent addition is the Game of Thrones Tapestry. It's a temporary exhibition which was created from linen from one of the last surviving linen mills in Northern Ireland. It actually dictates many of the famous scenes from the TV show and is a celebration of the show's creation in Northern Ireland. So it's a really good activity. You can pop around there and have a look and see if you can see the different events and episodes and it just expands around the walls. It's absolutely an amazing piece of artwork. So just in the city centre, just here to my right, you've got the city hall and this street is really great. It's full of restaurants, bars and cafes and leads you into the shops just down to Royal Avenue. Opposite me here, we have Visit Belfast, which is just a really great hub of information all about Belfast and further out into Northern Ireland. Now behind me, we have the City Hall, built in 1906. It's just an absolutely fantastic building. But what's really great about it is that the council offer free tours every day. So at 10 a.m., 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. during the week, and 12 p.m., 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. at the weekends, you can actually go and avail of a free tour. The tour takes you all through the history of the City Hall. You get in to see all the rooms. You can even try on the mayor's robes. And there's an interactive display in there as well, which is really good fun. You don't have to book. It's really first come, first serve. So my advice would be is to turn up in good time so that you can make sure that you get your place on the tour. But let's go in and have a look and see what's happening inside. So just a wee bit of history about the City Hall. Belfast actually only became a city in 1888 and at this time Belfast was booming, it was expanding, famous for its rope making, linen making, of course shipbuilding and engineering and actually Belfast at this point was more populated than Dublin which is hard to believe these days. Belfast City Hall stands on a site that was once White Linen Hall, an international linen exchange. And of course, this is why this area of Belfast is called the Linen Quarter. The site is 1.5 acres and has an enclosed courtyard. The building has towers in each of its four corners and a copper dome, which dominates the city photography. There are statues all around the grounds, which you can see from outside, including that of the founder of Harland and Wolfe, who was also a Belfast city mayor in 1885 to 1886. When you go inside, you'll just be amazed by the splendor. There's a grand staircase, reception room, great hall in fine marbles and stained glass windows showing the Belfast coats of arms, the history of Belfast from 1906 right through to 1996 and they're just a sight to behold. 
Belfast City Hall also has an amazing interactive exhibition spanning across six rooms which you can come through and actually really think about all the different things that happened in Irish history but this has to be my favourite part of the exhibition. This sideboard was actually manufactured at Harland and Wolfe and was destined for the Titanic but somehow didn't make it so it's amazing to see one of the last remaining pieces of history associated with the Titanic still surviving today. Belfast is a small city, so actually most things are within walking distance, but if you do want to find an alternative way to travel, you can always hire a Belfast bike. And what's great about these bikes is they're actually dotted around various locations throughout the city, so you can get one at City Hall and then drop it off at Titanic. So looking straight ahead when you come out of the City Hall you will find Royal Avenue. Royal Avenue leads you straight down to the Cathedral Quarter and it's actually the main shopping area of Belfast. It has actually been the main shopping area since 1881. So let's go have a wee look at the shops. In the middle of Royal Avenue you'll find Castle Court. Now this would have been one of the main shopping centres in Belfast until Victoria Square was built a couple of years ago. But what's really iconic about this building is its site. It's actually built on the site that the Grand Central Hotel used to be on. This hotel welcomed people like Winston Churchill, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones to Belfast. Definitely one of my favourite places so maybe I'll have time to pop in do a wee bit of shopping. At the bottom of Royal Avenue is Boy Park or Cathedral Gardens and this is really where the Cathedral Quarter starts. Here you'll see three large boys which were actually gifted to the city more than 50 years ago and would have actually been used in local water. Just to the left of that is the Mac Theatre and opposite is St Anne's Cathedral. St Anne's Cathedral or Belfast Cathedral was actually built in 1904 around the same time as the City Hall so it just shows you how Belfast was really booming at that time. It was built on the site of an old parish church which had actually been there since 1776 and only initially the nave was built with other bits being added throughout the years. You'll see the big spire poking up. That's actually a 40 metre steel spire called the Spire of Hope and that was actually erected in 2007. If you're interested in history and politics, there are actually two more small museums in the Cathedral Quarter area. They're not actually opened at the weekend, but they're the Northern Ireland War Memorial Museum and the Royal Ulster Rifles Museum, and they're actually both free, so really good place to visit if you are interested in history and politics. So the Cathedral Quarter really has to be on your list of things to do in Belfast. It's a totally regenerated area, full of bars, restaurants, nightlife. It's just a really nice, chilled out place to be. There's loads of specialist bars here. So you've got the likes of the Spaniard, which specializes in rum. You've got the Duke of York, which specializes in whiskey. And you've got other places that specialize in gins and craft beers. It's also got specialist shops as well. And you've got here the Friend at Hand, which is actually a specialist whiskey shop. It only sells Irish whiskey and actually named after the owner's friend who unfortunately passed away. I'm sure you've heard of the Game of Thrones doors as well. If you're looking for the Belfast one, it's actually in this pub here, the Dark Horse. So definitely a must to pop in and actually see that handcrafted door tells the story of one of the episodes from the Game of Thrones. The Cathedral Quarter is also very famous for its artwork. On nearly every street corner, there is fantastic examples of street art. I just actually love wandering around. I'm just amazed by the pure talent that's out there. What I really love about the Cathedral Quarter is its atmosphere. It's such a cultural hub. Behind me here, you have the Dirty Onion, which is an outdoor bar housed in Belfast's oldest building, which was actually built in 1680. And it has traditional music nearly every night of the week, as do lots of other bars in the Cathedral Quarter. You'll find they have lots of different live acts and live bands. And around the corner, you have one of the very few five-star hotels in Belfast, the Merchant Hotel. It is great for cocktails, afternoon tea, a meal, and it even has a hot tub on the roof with fabulous views over Belfast. So there's definitely something for everyone in the Cathedral Quarter. As you come out of the Cathedral Quarter, you'll see the Albert Clock, and that is Belfast's own Leaning Tower of Pisa. It was completed in 1869 and is another famous landmark. The problem was it was actually built on wooden piles in marshy reclaimed land around the River Farset, so the top of the tower actually leans four feet to the side. 
So just coming from the Albert Clock, heading over towards the River Lagan and over to the Titanic Quarter. But on your way, you might want to stop off at McHugh's. It was actually established in 1711, perfect for traditional Irish food, traditional Irish music, and really good Guinness. Now, I don't drink Guinness, but I would definitely have a wee tipple in here. Just before you head over the River Lagan, over to the Titanic Quarter, don't forget to check out the amazing artwork and sculptures, which really are symbols of Belfast. Stop at the Big Fish or the Salmon of Knowledge. It's a printed ceramic mosaic, 10 metres long. It was actually installed in 1999. And have a really good close look at it because the text and the images on the fish relate to the history of Belfast. Each scale tells a story, which is just truly amazing. The Beacon of Hope is also another amazing symbol of Belfast. It was actually constructed in 2007 and stands 19.5 metres high. It's the second largest public art in Belfast after the rise on Broadway roundabout and it is 1,920 tubes bolted together, although locals sometimes like to call it Nula with the Hula. So just crossing the River Ligon, as you can see behind me, the River Ligon was actually the birthplace of the RMS Titanic and it's a 53.5 mile long river starting from the Sleeve Crove Mountain and it leads to Belfast where it enters the Belfast Lock and then the inlet of the Irish Sea. As you walk over the River Ligon, you'll see in the distance the Waterfront Hall. It actually opened in 1997 and it hosts operas, pantomimes, musicals and has smaller studios as well. It's really good to check their event list because they do have some really good shows there and I've had many a good night out. Just further on up, you'll find St George's Market, which is the last covered Victorian market in Belfast. It was built between 1890 and 1896, so really historical building and today has up to 300 traders, crafters, musicians and amazing food are available on site. The good thing is it's actually free entry and it's open every Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It's perfect if you want to test local produce, local food or really want to find some really good local artwork or crafts or gifts. So when you cross the Lagan Bridge, you'll actually come to the Odyssey Pavilion and there are loads of things to do in Belfast inside here. There's the W5 Discovery Centre, which is really science-based and perfect for kids. You'll spend the whole day in there discovering, investigating and exploring. They do have loads of themed events as well, so do check on their event schedule throughout the year. In here as well, there's bowling alley, there's restaurants, so there's loads going on. It's also the home of the very famous Belfast Giants so if you do want to catch an ice hockey match you can just book tickets online and they do often have good deals on for families as well. This would actually be one of the main venues for major concerts and events in Belfast. Belfast Harbour Marina holds 45 boats and is part of Belfast Harbour which houses George Best City Airport, Harland and Wolf, Bombardier, Catalyst Inc, Titanic Quarter and Titanic Belfast. Oh, and of course, the film studios of a TV show called Game of Thrones. The docks area dates back to 1613. Records show that in 1663, there were 29 ships owned in Belfast. In the 18th century, Belfast replaced Carrickfergus as the most important port in Ulster. Carrickfergus, also known as Carrick, is a large town 11 miles on the north shore of Belfast. It is one of the oldest towns in all of Ireland. It is said to get its name from a legendary king called Fergus Moore, who ran his ship on a rock by the shore, becoming known as Carrickfergus or the Rock of Fergus. Carrick Fergus is older than Belfast and has an amazing castle built on the Rock of Fergus in 1177. There's so much history there, but that's another video. So a must on your list of things to do in Belfast is Titanic Belfast right behind me. Opened in 2012, a monument to Belfast maritime history. It's actually built on the site of Harland de Wolf shipyard where the Titanic was built. And inside here, you will hear the story of the Titanic, of how it was built, right through to its journey to when it was hit by an iceberg in 1912. It's actually recently been voted as one of the best tourist attractions in the world. Now we came and we spent about four or five hours just really taking our time, taking in the history and going through all the interactive exhibitions. I would set aside a good amount of time because there's everything in there from interactive exhibitions to 
activities that the children can do. There are rides that you can go on and really get the feeling of what it was like in the shipyard in those times, right through to the journey of the depths underneath the sea and what actually happened when the Titanic was sunk. So it is a really worthwhile trip or journey through history. So just behind me, you'll see in the distance Titanic Studios, which is actually one of the biggest film studios in Europe. And this has attracted the likes of HBO, Universal, and many more to create famous TV shows like Game of Thrones, City of Ember, and Your Highness. It was actually a paint hall for Harland & Wolf Shipyard originally, and that's why it was so big. And right in the heart of the Titanic quarter, you've got the newly built Titanic Hotel, which is actually the home to the Titanic drawing offices, which has been restored to its former glory. And you can actually pop in and have a really good look around. If you've been to Titanic, you might also want to see the SS Nomadic. And depending on what type of ticket you've purchased, you may have entry for free. So it is important to have a look at different ticket options online before booking. It was actually launched in 1911 and owned by White Star Line. It was a passenger ship to the RMS Olympic and the RMS Titanic, and is the only White Star Line vessel in existence today, which I just find absolutely amazing. It was built in Slipway 1, Olympic was in Slipway 2, and Titanic in Slipway 3. On the 10th of April 1912, she transported 270 first and second class passengers to the RMS Titanic. It also worked in France for many years and only came home to us in Belfast in 2006 and has actually been turned into a museum. It's absolutely amazing, known as Titanic's little sister and actually most of the design that was used in the Titanic follows through into the SS Nomadic. So it's really interesting to really get a glimpse into what the Titanic may have been like. It also has a little interactive trail that the children can do and the tour guides are amazing on there. So it is definitely one that you want to be adding to your list. If you look in the distance, you'll see two cranes which dominate the skyline, Samson and Goliath. They symbolise Belfast like no other building or monument has. Built in Germany, Goliath was put in place in 1969 and Samson in 1974. And they have a combined lifting capacity of 1,600 tonnes, one of the largest in the world. And I love these cranes because when you always fly into the airport, this is the first thing you see as you come into Belfast. At its height, Harland & Wolf had 35,000 employees, but after the cranes arrived, the business declined. Shipbuilding has ceased, but the cranes are retained as part of the dry dock and are still in use today. The docks now service oil rigs, and there's a growing cruise ship business. And it's amazing when you see the cruise liners coming in. They're full of luxury and lots of tourists actually wanting to really see what Belfast has to offer. What I really love about the Titanic Quarter is a beautiful walk all the way along from the Odyssey via the Belfast Harbour and round by the Titanic. It's an absolutely gorgeous walk which takes you right through to the HMS Caroline. On the way you'll actually see the Great Light Maritime Mile as well which is amazing. It's a new addition to Belfast. It's 130 years old and weighs more than 10 tonnes and is actually 7 metres high. It's a very rare artefact that produced one of the strongest lighthouse beams ever to shine. Originally made in 1887 for Tory Island Lighthouse off Donegal, it was moved to Mew Island in 1928. It was then removed in 2014 and converted to solar power and then sent to Austin Belfast in 2018. It's free for to visit and around it you will see that it tells the history of the light and where it's been and what it's done right around the base. If the blinds are down, it's to protect the light from the strong sunlight, but we've been very lucky to see it this evening and we actually can see the full force of the light. It's absolutely beautiful, just shining over onto the River Lagan. Another really worthwhile thing to do while down in the Titanic quarter is to have a visit at the HMS Caroline. It was a Navy decommissioned ship a C-class light cruiser. It was decommissioned in 2011 and at that time was the second oldest serving Navy ship. It had actually launched in 1914. Caroline is actually one of the only three surviving Navy warships that served in the First World War. She came to Belfast in 1924 and has served the Navy ever since. In fact, she was only changed into a museum in 2017. A really worthwhile tour. My children had an absolute ball in here full of history and really exciting events and loads of just things to see and really experience so definitely should be added to your list. 
There are also numerous walking tours and a wee tram tour which you can catch outside the Titanic Belfast building. These tours take you through the shipyard, the dry docks and really give you an insight into Titanic and where it was actually built. About 10 minutes walk outside Belfast, you will come across the Peace Wall. First built in 1969, it actually separates the Falls Road Nationalist Area and the Shankill Road Unionist Area. Most of these Peace Walls have actually been dismantled, but this one still stands and is actually still in use today. What's amazing about this wall is the amazing artwork and the iconic art installations that have been placed on the wall. So do feel free to come and write a message of peace or sign your name. Another great way to get around and really see Belfast is to take a black taxi tour. Now these tours are very focused on history, the troubles, the politics that were involved in Northern Ireland and usually these are private tours which will take you around all the different areas of Belfast and give you a really good insight into the murals and the history and politics that actually went on. So definitely if you're interested in history and politics you should book on to one of these tours. Another great way of seeing all the sites in Belfast is to take one of these tour buses. You can get a one day or a two day pass and they work on a hop on, hop off basis. They cover a massive range of areas, everything from Belfast Castle right through to the Titanic. And I know we've been on one and there was a guide, he was singing. It was just really loads of fun. Another great tour that you might want to do on your way to the Peace Wall is a Crumman Road Jail designed by Sir Charles Lanyon, built for £60,000 in 1845 and actually operated up until recently, 1996. It was known as Europe's Alcatraz, but there were a number of successful escapes in its 150 year history. There were riots and bomb attacks and well worth a visit. There's also a really nice restaurant there so you can actually stop and get a bite to eat as well. As you can see, there are a massive amount of things to do in Belfast. The beauty of Belfast is that it's a small city, so everything is within walking distance. But there are loads of things to do on the outskirts of Belfast as well. Things like Belfast Castle, which is totally free and has absolutely beautiful grounds which you can walk around. Belfast Zoo, the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. Now this is located just outside Belfast in a small town called Hollywood and it has two museums. One which is outdoor, so beautiful grounds which you can walk around and really explore what Irish rural life was like. There are loads of houses and little towns that you can actually go in and see what the houses and what life was like. And the Transport Museum, which has old trams, buses, motorbikes and even a DeLorean. Stormont, where the Northern Ireland Assembly sits, is also a really beautiful place to visit. Again, totally free. You can walk around the grounds and it also has an amazing play park. So if you've got children, you can actually do a forest walk ending in a beautiful play park with loads to do for all ages. My boys actually love that park and there's so much for them to do. Colin Glen is another fabulous park just on the outskirts of Belfast and really popular if you really like the story, the Gruffalo. It actually has a Gruffalo trail where you can actually take the children and see all the different parts of the story and the characters. It also has an adventure centre there with high ropes so if you've got slightly older children, there's definitely something there for all ages. Sir Thomas and Lady Dixon Park, just off the Malone Road, is famous for its rose gardens. And especially in the summer, it has some beautiful flower events there and some wonderful open air concerts. So it's great to check what's on. It has a beautiful play park as well and just loads of open space right in the heart of the city centre where children can run around or you can just have a relaxing, chilled out walk. Cave Hill Country Park, just off the Antrim Road, will give you the most wonderful views of Belfast. It is quite a hike to get up to the top, but you will see caves on the way and loads of history steeped into that country park as well. But it is a bit of a hike, so do bear that in mind. I hope you enjoyed all my favourite things to do in Belfast. But Northern Ireland is such an amazing country, there are loads of other things to explore. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, why not do a tour? You can travel all the way around all the locations where Game of Thrones were filmed in Northern Ireland. Or take a Causeway Coast tour up the causeway, over 160 kilometres of coastline, beautiful scenery and historical sites. The Glens of Antrim is another beautiful part of that causeway tour, so it's definitely worth a visit. Or if you really want to step yourself into another 
another city, why not try Derry City? Walk the beautiful historical walls of the city and there are loads of museums and really fun things to do. There are other counties such as Fermanagh, Armagh, Down, Tyrone, which all have a wealth of historical and really interesting, beautiful things to do. If you do have any questions or comments, do let us know in the comments below or send us an email. I really hope you enjoy our videos and do check us out because we're constantly lucky enough to be creating more and more content all about Northern Ireland and Ireland.